Welcome to the service. Please note our Bible school and counseling school registrations are open. Contact the church for more information. If you would like to be baptized, we are having a baptism service on the 26th of February. So please contact the church office for more information. If you would like to dedicate your child, it's a prerequisite for you to join the parenting seminar, which takes place on the 4th of March at 8.30 a.m. Dedications take place on the 5th of March, so please contact the church office for more information. TCN Provincial Conference takes place on the 24th and 25th of March at 150 rands per person. This conference aims to take pastors, leaders and teachers to the Summit of Leadership. For more information, please contact the church office. Sit back and enjoy the service. I want to talk to you today about the better connection. Now, how many of you remember there was a mobile phone network that used to have a slogan, the better connection? But whenever you try and call with that mobile network, you ended up not having connection, okay? Reception. I want to talk to you about the better connection. And, and how many of you would love to know the secret to having all your prayers answered? All your prayers answer. 100% success rate on your prayers. I would love to have that. And actually in the book of John 15, we're going to get to that just now. Jesus gives us the secret, two secrets, to having all our prayers answered. 100% success rate. Wow, that's amazing. And so, Jesus gives, in, in, in John 15, He gives us five levels of prayer, if you would. Five measures of prayer or you can say five levels of connection because I've I've noted that when I call somebody on the cell phone if it's a good connection we can have clear communication and the other person can hear and if it's an instruction like one of the staff members that I need to give an instruction they can clearly hear and act upon that how many of you can remember and I know you're gonna date yourself when you do but how many of you can remember that dial up internet connection and when some of the young people have no clue what we're talking about eh? Remember that dial-up as your internet is, and, and, and somebody's busy sending a fax, then the internet kicks off. Then all you hear is, you hear the fax machine. Can you remember that? And then we, and then we got solid lines like a telecom line, internet connection, separate. Wow. Next level. And then we, we got data that was 4G and later 5G, right? And then we got fiber okay we can't get fiber here at church because they say our density here is too little there's not enough users on this side of the road so we're still on data okay and one of these days we maybe are going to have SpaceX satellite internet that will be much faster much cheaper and much more convenient but what would you think of a person that has access to either SpaceX or fiber line at the same price, but he's still using dial-up. What would you think of a person like that? Come on, some of those dial-up lines, it felt like those old Lister engines. You remember? Those internet was so slow, you know. If you think at the same time of sending an email, it won't go through. Yet many of our prayers as Christians are with somewhat of a dial-up connection with God. And one of the reasons why we either don't pray, and I talk specifically to the men today, one of the reasons you and I as men, and I'm not talking as a pastor, but as a man now, one of the reasons why we often don't pray as much as we would, and we know Paul says, I want men, not just women, and I know the women pray, but I want men everywhere to lift up holy hands in prayer. But who come bit on manani? Can I tell you why? I think. I'll tell you why I sometimes don't pray. Because religion and the devil wants to make prayer a very complicated thing. It wants to make us believe that if you're not spiritual enough, you're not holy enough, you don't know the scriptures so well that you are disqualified from praying. And most of us as men are, as it's the mulakas, don't do no zitne. If you give me 101 steps to be a good father, then I say, no, thank you, even before I started. It's too difficult, it's too complicated. 
But if you can give me something that's simple, I can do that. And Jesus gives us simple steps to praying today. Prayers that will get answered today. He says, I am the vine, I'm the true vine, and we're going to get into that in John 15. Let's read that, and I'm reading from the message paraphrasing. It says, I am the vine. Now, I can just imagine Jesus coming down from the Mount of Olives, from the Garden of Gethsemane. It's his last day spending with his disciples, and he's kind of giving them the final instruction. So the most important thing he's going to tell them right now. And he, and he walks through the vineyards on the slope of the mountain, and he picks a, a, a vine branch, a grape branch from the vineyard. And he says, I am the vine. It actually says, I am the true vine, meaning I am the authentic vine. It means in the Greek, I am the real deal. Jesus says, I am the real deal. I am the authentic source of life, he says. Okay? And, and, and he takes this broken off branch, or maybe he picked one up that somebody else has broken off, and he says, apart from me, you can do nothing. Apart from me, you can bear no fruit. And that word apart means to be disconnected. It means to be removed from. He says, I'm the vine, you are the branches, and when you joined with me and I with you, the relation intimate and organic, the harvest is going to be sure and abundant, but separated. You can't produce a thing. Anyone who separates from me is deadwood. Can you say deadwood? Okay. Gathered up and thrown on the bonfire. Speaking of hell's fire here. But if you make yourself at home in me and my words are at home in you, you can be sure that whatever you ask will be listened to and acted upon. Do you see that? Jesus said, if, if these conditions are met, if you pray like this, whatever you ask in prayer is going to be heard and acted upon by God. This is how my Father shows who He is. King James says, this is how my Father is glorified when your prayers are answered. God is not glorified by unanswered prayers. God is not glorified when we as believers pray prayers and we pray and we pray and never get an answer to. But God is glorified when you and I begin to be praying prayers that get answered. He says, this is how my Father is glorified. How He shows you who He is when you produce fruit or grapes. When you mature as disciples. When your prayers get answered. That's what it says in English. So I want to just leave five steps with you, five levels of prayer, five levels of connection with you. The first one is that separate from Jesus, we produce no fruit. Can you say that? Separate from Jesus, I can produce no fruit. Disconnected from Him, detached from Jesus. And that represents the life of an unbeliever, the life of an unsaved person. It can also represent the life of a religious Christian that's never connected to Jesus. I remember growing up in a pastor's home, and my, my parents served God, but, but I grew up religiously. I, I went to church out of habit, but I never made that personal connection to Jesus until the age of 16. And there was no fruit in my life. I don't know how to pray. I, I rather didn't pray because I didn't know how to pray. I had no connection. I learned one thing, and that is that I can live in a garage for 20, and I did live in the garage for a few years. We, we converted it into a bedroom. And you know what? The strangest thing is it did not convert me into a Porsche. Living in a garage doesn't make me a car. Attending church is wonderful, and it's great, and it places me in proximity where I can encounter Jesus. But going to church in itself doesn't make me fruitful. A couple of weeks ago, I had a brother, he's in the audience today, and, and he would give his own testimony, and I, and I give this testimony with his permission. And he sat in my office with tears in his eyes, and this areas of his life that's just been falling apart, and he says, I don't know how to do and what to do. And, and you know what, sitting there, he was on his way to visit some, some, some of his children, and for the weekend and I said you know what I'm gonna pray that you will have an encounter with Jesus Christ something would change in this moment of time that's all I feel in my heart we can do we can provide counseling and support and this and that but but I'm just gonna pray that you'd have an encounter with Jesus and and Monday morning actually Sunday night he tried to call me Monday morning he was in the office that face it was full of distress and anguish a week before or a couple of days before 
turned to joy and smiles. And he says, I can't wait to, to tell pastor I had an encounter with God. Friday morning he attended a, a breakfast, men's breakfast, and, and he had an encounter. And Sunday morning he had another encounter. And he says, I'm, I'm not the kind of man that comes up from my chair and to the front and kneel and come forward. as is geformeerd. Ek is nie my style nie. He said, but when I found myself after the service, I was at the front kneeling down, crying out to God. And it as, was his, as if there's a tunnel of light on me. I didn't see anybody to the left, to the right. I didn't care what other people were doing. All, all I knew is I meant business with God and God meant business with me. And I stood up there from that floor, a changed man. You see, what was that? It was a born again encounter. And many of us, Maybe I in church for how long? I was in church for 16 years. But I never had a born again encounter. His brother has also been coming faithfully. He loves the church. He loves the Lord. He loves... But when you have a born again encounter, Jesus says, you can be as religious as you want. You can do all the good works. Good works will not get you into heaven. Religious works will not get you into heaven. You see, the, the, the path to, to hell is paved with good in Intentions, because intentions alone and good works cannot get me into heaven. It is when I connect to the vine, Jesus Christ. Then I will bear fruit. I will bear the fruits of salvation. You to ask me, Pastor Jan, what must I do? Ain't like next me. Paul says in Romans 10 verse 9 and 10, he says, all you have to do to get the fruits of salvation is believe in your heart in Jesus and confess with your mouth to that effect and you will be saved. See, the fruits of salvation is free. I've never seen a, a grape branch forcing itself to bear fruit. You've never seen an apple boom, an apricot tree, or a fig tree going like, huh, huh. let's press the apricot out, let's press the grapes out. Huh. No, no, no. When the branch is connected to the source, to the vine. When we are connected to Jesus Christ, the, the fruit will come by itself. And you need that connection, that born again encounter with God. And if you've never had a born again encounter, then this morning is your morning. The second phase in bearing fruit is that when we connect it to Jesus, we bear some fruit. When we connect our lives, I remember I had no purpose in life. I, I had no mission in life. I had no direction in life as a, as a teenage boy because I never was connected to Jesus. I, I knew him religiously. Like some of us, if, you, if I would ask you, do you know Nelson Mandela, who's passed away, but if you know the late Madiba, many of us would say, yes, I know him. No, we don't know him. We know about him, and we can read up on him, but we don't know him in person. We've never connected to him in person. Many people know Jesus because they know what Wikipedia says or they know what the church says, but they don't know Jesus in person. It makes me think of this young man who was once questioned by a great man of God, and I think it was one of the Wesley brothers, and he said, young man, what do you believe? And the young man said, sir, I believe what my parents believe. See, he thought he was passing the buck, right? He says, that's fine, young man, but tell me, what is it that your parents believe? He said, sir, my parents believe what the church believes. You see, he's quite a sharp young man. Eh? Passed the buck another time. And then the man of God thought he's going to corner him now. He says, and tell me, young man, what is it that the church believes? And again, the young man was very sharp. He said, the church believes, sir, what I believe. <laughs> you see, he didn't know what he believed. He wasn't connected to Jesus. But connected to me, Jesus says, you, you will bear fruit. He says, a branch that's not connected to me but will be cut off. And the word there, cut off, means to dry up, to be parched, to be wasting away, to be withering away. I remember before I met Jesus, my life felt like that. I felt like I was parched. I felt like I was dried up. I, I felt like I, the life out of me was withering away until the day I met Jesus and I became a, a new creation. The old thing became past and I became brand new. There was a testimony of this man sitting in my office this week saying, Past everything is new. 
I'm born again. You see, in John 15, Jesus gives us five levels of prayer. And we're going to put a continuum on the screen, if you could follow with me. The red part of this from, from minus 10 to zero, if you can put that slide up, yeah. It says, separate from Jesus, I can bear how much fruit? No fruit. Then at zero, at my ground zero, I get connected to Jesus. I get born again, and I begin to bear some fruit. Not religious fruit, but some fruit. And that is the fruits of salvation. Then I grow. The next phase that I want to talk about is connecting to Jesus. Then it says, I will bear more fruit. Verse 5 says, I'm the vine, you are the branches. When you joined with me and I with you, the relationship, intimate and organic, the harvest is sure to be abundant. Third level of fruit is connecting to Jesus gives me more fruit. What's the difference between being connected to Jesus at rebirth and connecting to Jesus? You see, at rebirth, I get saved. But how many of you know that you once upon your life got saved and many of us got saved and left there and we stayed the same? You see, when I connect to Jesus at rebirth, I get saved, but it's through connecting to Him on a regular basis I get changed. When I become a disciple of Jesus and I connect to Jesus daily or regularly, I get changed because every time I connect to Him, I receive His heart, I receive His word, I receive His love and His power, and I change and I change and I change and I become more like Him. And Jesus says, yes, if you connect to me once off, you're going to have the fruits of salvation, some fruit. Come on, turn to your neighbor and say, are you bearing at least some fruit? But Jesus says, if you connect to me on a regular basis, you, you produce more fruit. You produce regular fruit. Wow. You see, when I met Katinka, she was studying Bible school in Harry Smith. Wow. And all the, all the young guys in, in the college was, was chasing her. And I realized I'm in trouble. I need to, my opa my inning geleer het gesê, Jan, if you meet the right one, moet jy nie laat gras onder jou voete groei nie. You know that saying. Down there the grass grow under your feet. You would move, man. He says, my grandpa met his wife on holiday somewhere in Pease, London or whatever. And I believe within a week or so, they got married like that. Landros come to her, whoop ups. And they were married many, many years. You see, he gave me good advice. I would not to marry that quick though. But, and so I realized these guys are chasing this girl and she's, she's not only a hot one, but she's, sorry for that in church, but, but she's all... <clears throat> Truth is the truth. But she's also a godly woman, right? And you don't get a lot of those combinations, right? So I realized I need to move fast. So I connected to her, right? I asked her to be my girlfriend. Luckily, she also liked me. <laughs> I had some long blonde hair. It was hanging here. And I had some muscles back then. I connected to her. And how many of you know that even when she said yes, we didn't know one another. We had no relationship. But we were connected. How do we build the, the, the relationship? We need to keep on connecting. So I went home to Bloom. She stayed, finished the Bible school, and we wrote one another love letters. Okay? And she would take some of her perfume and splash it over her letters. And it would smell so nice, I would put it at my pillow and sleep nicely. Dream of her. Okay, not really. I, I didn't. She did do the perfume though. And then we got cell phones. I remember these, these maroon Nokia. I don't know what you called it, but it was like a brick. It was both a cell phone and a self-defense weapon, okay? <laughs> and we could send SMS. Remember when the SMSs came out? It's like, ah. Oh. And we could send and we called one another and she didn't want to hang up the phone and I didn't want to hang up the phone. Yes, sit ye eerst in here. You know that whole draw, come on. Who were in love once? Okay. Was lekker, eh? It was through connecting to one another on a regular basis that we build a relationship. You see, some of us, we, we all, all of us have some friends that are yearly friends. You call them, you visit them once a year, and it's great because when you connect, you pick up right where you left off. But they're not going to make you feel guilty because you call only once a year. They're not going to put you on a guilt trip. How many of you have got friends like this? Like a mensa. 
like like a casual, but you connect it, right? And then we've got some friends that you, you need to connect once a month. That's, if, if, if a month go past and you haven't connected them, you're getting like withdrawal symptoms. You begin to long on mensen wat jy nie ken nie, and on plekke wat jy nog nie gesien het nie, okay? Do you have friends like that, once a month friends? Come on, you've got. And then how many of you have got weekly friends, like once a week? You need to call on the phone or just be in contact weekly because if you don't see one another, something is missing. And then some of us have the privilege of having daily friends where if there wasn't contact, maybe it's a, one of your children, one of your daughters, you've got a close relationship, but you have to connect every day, otherwise something feels missing. Come on, how many of you have got a, a friend like that? And then if I look at these young people on social media, some of them are like all the day friends. They're like, keep the WhatsApp conversation open. Like, what are you doing now? In class. Ten minutes later, what are you doing now? Still in class. Okay. What are you doing now? I am distracted. By what? By you. <laughs> Jesus does not want to be your once a year friend. He doesn't want to just be your friend on Easter, on Christmas Day. Jesus doesn't want to be your monthly friend or even your weekly friend where let's just go to church on Sunday to make Jesus happy. No, no, no. Jesus wants to be your everyday friend. He wants to be your all the day friend. What is prayer? Can I simplify prayer for us men? Preaching at the men now. Women, you can take notes, but this is for the men, okay? What is prayer? Simple. Prayer is keeping the conversation open. As he says, if you remain in me in verse 7, and my words remain in you, ask whatever you wish. Come on, how's that for an open check? Can you say whatever I wish? And it will be done for you. The fourth level of prayer is connecting to His Word produces much more fruit, Jesus says. Jesus, if you connect to my Word, you will produce much more fruit. Why is that? Because when I connect to the Word of Jesus, when I connect to the Word of God, how many of you know that this will change the way I pray? You see, when, when, I was, when I didn't know the Word, the only prayers I prayed were selfish prayers. Self-centered prayers. But a, a God-centered prayer is much more powerful than a self-centered prayer. Because the Word of God contains the will of God. And when I begin to pray the will of God, my percentage of success on my prayers is going to go through the roof. Because when I prayed prayers that is aligned to the Father's will, He's going to answer it because that will glorify Him. And so that's why God is saying, if you stay in my word, Jesus is saying, if you stay in my word, if you read my word, something will change. One of the things this, this brother revealed to me, he says, before this pastor, I read the scripture, and, and I know it, and, but it just doesn't find entrance. It, it doesn't make sense to me. He says, after I had this born-again encounter, I read the scripture, and everything applies to my life. Suddenly, it's real, it's true, it's, it's changing my life. You see, when he begins to pray what he reads in Scripture now, what's going to happen? His success rate on his prayer is going to jump through the roof. Because when you stay in my word, you're going to bear much more fruit. This week we had graduation of our Bible school. We had about 70 or 80 students, Bible school, counseling school, graduating here on Thursday evening. And I want to just commend those because who study because they said, I want to equip myself in the word of God. Why? I want to remain in the Word of God so I can pray much more effective prayers. If we go back to our, our arrow, our continuum, if you can put that on the screens. Remember, separated from Jesus, we can bear how much fruit? No fruit. Connected to Jesus at salvation, we bear some fruit. Connecting to Jesus through regular conversation, we bear much fruit. Connecting to His Word, we bear much more fruit. And then in verse, from verse 8, it says, Jesus says, This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourself to be my disciples. Verse 9, I've loved you the way my Father has loved you. Make yourself at home in my love. If you keep my commandments, you'll remain intimately at home in my love. My commandment is this, love each other as I have loved you. For greater love is no one than this, than to lay down his love, his life for his friends. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, fruit that will last, so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father 
will get it. The last stage of prayer, of connecting to God, is to connect to His love. Why? Because when I connect to the love of God, I will pray the heart of God. You see, I, I can pray the will of God from His Word, but still not represent His heart well in that. Come on, how many of you have relatives that irritate you? Come on, okay, how many of you have got it? Come on. Okay, so now some of you have got it in your hand. Okay? But we all have a relative or somebody at work or wherever that, that irritates us. And so it's easy for me to, to find the will of God in Scripture for this person and pray a condemning prayer over them, a judgmental prayer. Lord, let them repent, let them turn or burn or dry of bry, my brother. But it's not representing the heart of God well. And Jesus is saying, if you stay in, my, if you stay in me, if you stay in my word, you will pray prayers that's in Father's will. But if you stay in my love, you'll also pray prayers that is in his heart. And friends, if we can learn to pray prayers that is aligned to God's will and aligned to God's love, Jesus says every single one of those prayers will be answered. It will be heard and will be acted upon. The secret to praying answered prayers is to remain in Jesus, to remain in an open conversation, to remain in His Word, and to remain in His love.